Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm joined today by Michael Weissman. He is VP of Marketing at Scipio. Michael, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Thank you. Now, Scipio is the maker of the first chipset for G.Fast, and this is the standard that brings a super fast broadband speeds to copper wire. So we heard a lot about this last week when BT said that they'll be using G.Fast to deliver super fast broadband to their customers. And so I'm hoping that you can update us a little bit on what G.Fast is exactly and what's going on with the standard that has won BT's endorsement at this time. Yeah, G.Fast is a broadband access standard. It's sort of the successor to DSL. It uses copper wires, but instead of using uh, the frequency used by DSL, it uses a much uh, wider frequency and delivers a substantially higher performance. So right now, G.Fast is designed to deliver up to one gigabit per second to consumers' home over existing copper wiring. And the reason this was done was to give uh, telephone companies the ability to deliver ultra-broadband speed, which was too expensive to deliver via fiber to the home and couldn't be delivered technically via traditional DSL. And what about for, um, for backhaul? I know that a lot of times it's that last mile in a building that, that makes, for example, small cell deployments challenging. Does G.Fast have implications for small cell backhaul? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's my understanding that something like half of, uh, of the, the cell towers today cannot be reached by fiber, and um, we don't have a coverage problem, but we have a capacity problem, and the core bottleneck on the capacity problem is backhaul. Uh, at least with our chipsets, we support uh, IEEE uh, 1598 or whatever it is, which is the uh, time synchronization for... Uh, for uh, backhauling such information, and we do think that it will be a, uh, a big market opportunity for sure. Okay, now I know that you cannot talk about your customers, but uh, you know BT is, is a pretty big name, and it sounds like that they are making a pretty significant commitment to this. Do you think we might see other carriers adopt G.Fast for, for broadband um, wireline? Uh, yes, you know, the G.Fast standard uh, was done in the uh, ITU, and the big members of the ITU were BT, Orange, AT&T, uh, you know, all of the big carriers around the world are members of the ITU uh, and uh, were participants in the creation of the standard. Uh, within Europe, for example, there's an organization called Celtic Plus. This is a, a European Union a research project that was originally called um, uh, 4GBB, which was the fourth generation broadband, and was designed to bring to Europe a next generation broadband technology. Uh, that group promoted what ultimately became G.Fast, and that group has been uh, studying G.Fast and validating the technology, and that group includes BT, it includes uh, Telefonica, it includes uh, Orange and others, and uh, Scipio is the chip vendor into that organization. Uh, we do believe that uh, uh, service providers around the world that have copper infrastructure are uh, all seriously evaluating G.Fast and will make decisions unique to their own architectures, but I think the demand uh, for G.Fast is extraordinarily large, and uh, BT's interest is not limited to BT, there are many, many other service providers that are actively uh, evaluating the technology, and even RFPs have already been issued from Tier 1 service providers asking for bids to deploy uh, G.Fast technology already. Okay, great. That's good to know. Now, Intel is interested, too. I think that they bought or are about to buy a company that is a partner of yours, Lantique. Can, can you give us an update on, on Lantique and how they fit into yeah, this? Yeah, so, um, so the Scipio partnership with Lantique is, uh, uh, is a strong partnership. Um, uh, Lantique has a very uh, good technology related to the, um, the optical side. So right now we have a DPU device that snaps into uh, our reference design is based upon a Lantique optical uh, interface. 
And then on the other side, our DPU connects to a consumer's device, and we have a partnership with Lantique on the residential gateway as well, where they take our um, technology and then uh, do a residential gateway that supports G.Fast. So they, they sort of straddle us. Uh, we're in the middle. Um, they have what, the, what happens before us, so the backhaul kind of area on the optical side. And then they have the CPE side, and we're the access layer that sits in between. Okay. Now, do you know what the price point is roughly for those residential gateway solutions? No, I, I, that's something that you'd have to talk to uh, Lantique or the, the, end, uh, the end manufacturer about that. Right. Okay, and can you give us a little bit of background on Scipio? Are you one of the founders? Yes, I am. I'm one of uh, five founders. So Scipio was founded in 2012. And it was founded by a bunch of guys that worked together at uh, Sigma and, and at Coppergate. And we realized, we were kind of home networking experts, and we realized the home network actually had lots of capacity, but nothing could get to the home network because the capacity was constrained on the, uh, on the last mile. And we had worked on uh, G.HN, which was a in-home wiring technology that, um, that had tremendous capabilities but had weaknesses when used in the access world. And we recognized that there needed to be a new standard for access technology but could leverage these new technical elements, uh, high frequencies and things like that, that had never been done before. And we realized we could actually solve an enormous problem. The, the, the problem that telcos have is... Uh, is somewhere between a half a trillion dollar and a trillion dollar uh, problem of, of bringing fiber all the way into the consumer's residence. It's that last anywhere from 10 meters to 200 meters or even 400 meters. Um, that's the most expensive part. So we realized we could take all of our know-how, bring it into this new domain, which is access technology, and many of our founders had come from access before going into home networks, so they had vast, vast, vast experiences, 20 plus years experiencing uh, in, in these types of technologies, and we thought we could really, you know, positively change the world in, uh, in bringing that out. So since that time, we've raised $27 million in uh, uh, venture funding, uh, and we were the first to announce the G.Fast uh, chipset, we were the first to announce uh, Ultra HD running on uh, uh, stuff. We were the first to announce reverse power. We were the first to announce um, SDN running on it. Uh, and so we continue to be the, the leading guys uh, in the space and continuing to innovate. Uh, in fact, this week we announced that um, when, when this group in the ITU got together to start G.Fast, they set for itself some ambitious goals. Well, it turns out we vastly exceeded those goals. We fully comply with the standard, but we have optimized the standard such that we're getting distances that are twice as far for the same uh, uh, same rate. So uh, I think we, we announced this week that we're doing 200 megabits at 400 meters, which is an astonishingly uh, good number. Uh, when we originally started the G.Fast working group, we didn't think that G.Fast could even go 400 meters. But what we've discovered empirically when we actually implemented the chips, uh, it's actually done really, really well. And that opens up the possibility uh, to, to bring G.Fast into more use cases for service providers. Yeah, that is very exciting. Can, can you share the names of any of your investors? So our investors are... Um, uh, uh, Patango, which is the largest VC in Israel, um, uh, Gemini, uh, Genesis, um, Amiti, and Aviv are our, all of our VCs. Okay, okay, great. And then do you see your technology as, as complementary or competitive with the faster and faster wireless solutions for the home that we see? I mean, Wi-Fi in particular is getting more and more robust, multi-user MIMO, 802.11ac, it's just always getting you know, stronger and faster. Do you see that as a threat to what you're doing, or are just um, consumers will need more and more connectivity in more and more ways? Okay, so let's 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 
not use the term wireless. Let's 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 stick at first with the term Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi is uh, um, complementary in that Wi-Fi will need to be backhauled in some way, and that backhaul will, in many cases, be backhauled by G. Fast. So I don't think that this is competitive. I think this is complementary. If we look at um, technologies such as uh, LTE and things like that, generally speaking, um, the LTE is not directly on the tower, and it also needs to be backhauled. And a lot of guys, uh, if you look at what, um, what Paul Jacobs has talked about, he has what he calls the inside-out strategy, where the idea is that we, uh, since 70% of all Wi-Fi uh, wireless is indoors, that he intends to have a, a plethora of, of very small uh, wireless uh, um, antennas inside a residence. It'll accumulate that content, but that content still needs to be backhauled. So if you look at the place that Wi-Fi is most difficult, uh, wireless, uh, uh, let's call it cell, cell communications is most difficult, is an apartment building where you have a high density of users. Well, that high density of users, that content has to be backhauled. And right now, one of the biggest use cases for uh, Scipio and G.Fast is to backhaul uh, broadband from apartment buildings. So we actually think, again, that cell technology is complementary and not competitive. Uh, if you look at uh, things like the um, E band, G band, you know, for, uh, 60 to 80 gigahertz um, a backhaul technology that's more like fiber replacement technology, that also is not competitive because it's replacing the fiber segment, it's not replacing the in building segment. So that also is complementary, but the use case is different. So uh, generally, we don't think wireless is uh, is threatening to us, but but not threatening in three unique ways, uh, as I explained. 